Hey guys, it's Ryan here from Explained, and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be watching a science fiction drama movie titled The Man from Earth, which was released back in 2007. The story is about a man who has lived for 14,000 years, and throughout his life he has constantly changed places every 10 years when people start to notice that he doesn't age. The movie touches on Christianity and religion, so people who strongly believe in it, please don't watch this video as it might offend or trigger you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Turn on the subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie begins with Professor John Oldman packing his belongings onto his truck preparing to move to a new home. His colleagues show up without informing him. To John Oldman's surprise, they are here to give him a farewell party. One of John's colleagues, Dan, says to John that he should not leave after 10 years of being a professor. He's confused as to why John is leaving his career behind after just 10 years. Another colleague, Edith, brings up the fact how John hasn't even aged a bit in the last 10 years. All the lecturers want to know the secrets why he hasn't aged and why he wants to move away. John replies that he just likes to move every now and then, and that's why he has to leave. Meanwhile, when everyone is talking, Dan finds a carving stone which is around 12,000 to 17,000 years old belonging to the Magdalenian culture, also called Upper Paleolithic. Everyone is amazed to see it. Here John seems to be a bit worried. John's colleagues tell him that if he has anything to say, they are all ready to hear it. To this John replies that he indeed has something to tell all of them. Then John says that he wants to ask a silly question. What if a man from the Upper Paleolithic survives till the present day and never dies? To this, one of John's colleagues answers that it's an interesting plot for a book and asks him whether he's working on a science fiction book. He further adds that according to him, if a man is alive for 14,000 years, his knowledge would be astonishing. Another one of John's colleagues, Harry, says a human body is designed to live for 190 years, but most of us died due to slow poisoning. In science fiction terms, if a human body functions perfectly and regenerates cells perfectly, then it can live for thousands of years. Because in 24 hours all the cells in the pancreas are changed, stomach lining changes in 3 days, and the whole body in 7 years. If a body does a perfect detox and perfect renewal, then it could live longer. He further says that anything's possible. A time was there when people used to believe in magic and now in science. There's also a time when Columbus went to find a new route to India and everyone said he was mad. Then John reveals something astonishing. John says that he got a chance to sail with Columbus. He says that at the time everyone was pretty sure that the earth was flat. At that point, he also thought that they might fall from the edge of it at some place. John's colleagues look extremely surprised. His colleague Harry says to John that this means you are a very old Cro-Magnon living until the present. John makes a weird sound and everyone starts laughing. A female colleague of John's who went to take something to eat comes back and asks what happened. To this, one of the colleagues says that John's claiming that he's 14,000 years old. Not believing John's story like the others, the lady tells John to stop joking around because according to her, he doesn't look a day older than 900 days. Everyone finds John's story interesting and wants to listen more. John says that every 10 years or so, people would start to notice that he doesn't age, so he moves on. He adds that he aged until about 35 years and ended up leaving his group because they saw him as magical and thought that he was stealing their lives away to stay young. He says that he doesn't remember everything. It's selective memory, the high points, the low points, and traumas that he can remember. He further says that the first 2,000 years were cold. With time, the glaciers started melting and the sea started to get visible and the continents were separated by rising seas. Listening to this, one of the professors says that he has read this in a textbook. John says that through books he was able to recollect his memories, else it's impossible to remember everything for 14,000 years. One of the ladies asked John whether he was curious where we all came from. John says that he would look up at the sky and wonder if there's got to be some man up there controlling the universe. John then says that at first he thought there was something wrong with him. He thought maybe he was a bad guy for not dying. He later began to think if he was cursed or perhaps blessed. After this, John's colleagues start asking him many questions and he keeps answering all of them. Then one of them asks John why he's telling them all this after keeping his secret for 14,000 years. John says that he wanted to say goodbye as himself, not what they thought he was. He says that he migrated through an endless flat space full of endless new things, forests, mountains, tundra, canyons. He says that his memory sees what he saw then, freeways, urban sprawl. He adds that early on the world got bigger and bigger. He says that he's been busted a few times, spent a year in jail for faking a government application. 
Eventually, he headed to the east, thinking it might be warmer there. He then says that he got the hang of moving alone and fitting in where he wanted to. It was around the beginning of the Bronze Age. He followed the trade routes from the east, traded copper tin, and learned new languages as he went. He says that moving on was easier as a hunter-gatherer. Difficult as villages merged and toughened city-states where authority was centralized, it seemed as though he was always moving on. He further learned some tricks, even faked his death a couple of times. He then continued east to India. He reveals that luckily at the time he met Buddha, the most extraordinary man he's ever known. The Buddha taught him things that he never knew about before, so he studied with him until he died. He says that Buddha always knew something was different about him. One of the professors says, what if we tell this secret to everyone? To this, John says that no one will believe in this story and it will vanish in disbelief. John says that with time, all of you also will not believe in it. Now, one of John's colleagues thinks that John has some serious problems, so he calls security. So he secretly calls Dr. Will, a psychiatry professor, informing him how crazy John is acting and asks him to come as soon as possible. Now, Will arrives and everyone tells him that according to John, he has been alive for 14,000 years. Will asks John if he has ever been seriously ill in his enormous lifetime. John says that in the last hundred years, he has had typhoid, yellow fever, smallpox, and black plague. Will asks him that if he had smallpox, why are there no scars on his body? John says that he doesn't get scars. He further tells him that he has had 10 degrees over a span of 170 years. He says that he got his biology degree in 1840, but the knowledge was not so vast at that time. Listening to this, Will gets really confused. He recalls the fact that some of John's early friends feared that he was stealing their lives. Will asks if John knew for certain that he wasn't stealing lives away from his friends. He added that there has always been legends of such a thing called vampires who drink the blood of humans and took their life. Now Will takes out his revolver and points to John. He says that this will help him to see if John dies or not. John replies that he never said that he was immortal. Will says a shot to the arm will let them see whether it heals or not. Everyone stops Will from doing this. Will leaves saying that he has work to do. Meanwhile, John is told that Will's wife passed away yesterday because of cancer. John realizes Will is in pain because of his wife's death, so he runs to apologize and ask him for the revolver. Will gives him his revolver, and then John sees that there's no bullet in that revolver. John comes back inside. Everyone says that they want to hear more because they find the story very interesting. John tells him that he met a man in the 1600s. He thought that he was like him, so he told him about himself. John further says that they talked for two days. It was all pretty convincing, but they couldn't believe each other, so they parted, agreeing to keep in touch. Then John tells the crowd that 200 years later, he thought he saw him at a train station, but lost him in the crowd. Next, one of them asks John if he's religious, to which John says that he doesn't follow any religion. Dan asks if he believes in God. John says that he does not need the hypothesis, saying that God may be around. Then Dan asks him if he ever met any person from their religious history, a biblical figure. John says yes, in a way. They ask who. John says we should skip this one because this is going in a direction that he didn't expect. Everyone urges him to tell. John says that the entire Bible is mostly a myth and allegory with some basis in historical events. One of the ladies, Edith, who firmly believes in the Bible, says that she can't hear this. Everyone convinces her to sit down because they wanted to hear more from John. John tells them that when he met the Buddha, he liked what he heard and thought about it for a while. When he returned to the Mediterranean, he didn't like what the people had become, a giant killing machine. So he went to the Near East thinking, why not pass the Buddha's teaching on in a modern form? Edith says that she knew that John will claim himself as Jesus Christ. John says, oh no, that's the medal they pinned on Jesus to fulfill their prophecy. Dan asks about the crucifixion, and John says that he blocked the pain as he learned to do it in India. He also learned to slow his body process down to the point where they were undetectable. They thought he was dead, so his followers pulled him from the cross, placed him in a cave. However, his body normalized. As he was trained, he attempted to go away undetected, but some devotees were standing watching him. He tried to explain them, but they were ecstatic. Thus, he was resurrected and ascended to Central Europe to get away as far as possible. Listening to all this, Edith gets really emotional. One of the professors asked John to show his wrist to see marks of when he was being hanged. John tells him that he doesn't get scars. John also compares pagan mythology with Christianity. According to pagan mythology, there were many gods, but Christianity believes in one God only. 
To this, Dan says that the early Christian leaders threw away Hebrew manuscripts and borrowed from pagan sources all over the place. He also says that Jesus and Buddha's teaching mean the same thing, kindness, tolerance, and brotherhood, and love. John says that's what he taught, but later many stories were created. Priests created heaven and hell so they can rule through seduction and terror. Will, who had left before, comes back. One of the colleagues asked John about the name Jesus. John says that he always called himself John. He says that as tales of the resurrection spread, the name was confused with the Hebrew meaning God is gracious. He adds that his stay on earth was seen as divine proof of immortality that led to God as salvation, or Yahshua, which in translation became his proper name, changing to late Latin, Lysus, and finally in medieval Latin, Jesus. And it was a wonder to watch it all happen. Edith refuses to believe this. To this, John says that one day he did something teaching on a hill. He gave them one choice, asking them who they thought he was. He then says that today I'm giving this choice to you. Edith gets very emotional and starts crying, many of them almost believing. Will says to stop this. He says this has gone too far and these people are very upset. He further says that he doesn't think that John is mad, but what he's saying is not true. He says the time has come when you must admit this is a hoax. He demands to tell these people the truth. A few moments of silence and then John says it was all a story. Everyone gets really disappointed and starts leaving one by one. Everyone leaves but John's girlfriend stays. She still believes in whatever John said. She asks John how many times he has changed his name. John tells her that he hadn't changed his name ever. He only changed his surname. And he starts telling her his surnames one by one. He also tells her that about 60 years ago when he was teaching at Harvard, his name was John Thomas Party. Will, who was not believing in John, listens to this and is shocked. He asks John whether he taught chemistry there. To this, John says yes. Will refuses to believe this. John tells him that his mother's name was Nola. Will breaks and wants to reject this and asks John his dog's name. John says Woofy, which was true, and Will becomes very emotional. He asks John why he abandoned them, to which John apologizes by saying that he had to move on. Will has an emotional breakdown and gets a heart attack. An ambulance is called and Will's dead body is taken. John's girlfriend Sandy says to him that perhaps this is the first time you saw your grown child die. John agrees by saying he hadn't experienced it before. Now we see that John takes his car, drives to the road and stops to wait. He's waiting for Sandy and Sandy decides to go with him. This means that in the future both of them decide to stay together. With this, the film ends here. The film was released in the year 2007 and has a rating of 7.9 on IMDb. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment down your thoughts on the movie. And before you leave, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more movie recaps.